Hello everyone, it is Patricia from TrenchlaHeaven.com. This is Spidey, my G. Rosea, Chilean rose hair, and she's looking very beautiful and cute as always in her new enclosure. And uh, today I wanted to talk about tarantula bites and the potency of their venom from across different types of tarantulas. So um, this information came from the Exotic Pet Society. I had so seen a post from them um, online somewhere. I think it was a while ago, so I don't remember where I saw it, but um, I thought it might be useful because a lot of beginners don't really know, um, the, may not know the difference between old world newer tarantulas and why they might want to, especially if you're a beginner and just starting out, why you might want to start with a new world tarantula. So I think this might be helpful. So I'm going to go in order of least to most. And uh, so the new world tarantulas, these are tarantulas that do not have the most potent venom. Not to say that their bites do not hurt, not to say that you can't have a pretty strong reaction to them. I personally have never been bitten. Uh, Spidey is a new world tarantula, but I've never been bitten. And I've also never been haired. So I can't really speak to personally how that feels, but I am going off of what I have heard and what the research is saying and what this post said. So the reason that new world tarantulas don't have the most potent venom is because this group of tarantulas actually, I guess they evolved to have the defenses of the urticating hairs, which are like kind of like these barbed hairs on their abdomen that they will kick off when they feel threatened or stressed. And if these hairs get on you, um, you definitely don't want to be in the line of where these where the tarantula is throwing them or kicking them off because they are very irritating. They can cause rashes, they can cause pain. Um, you definitely don't want them anywhere near your face or in your eyes. Um, you know, some people have said that breathing them in by accident is, you know, just awful. So you definitely don't want to. It's not, this is not necessarily better than getting bitten. Um, none of these defenses are great to experience. I also want to say before I talk about the actual venom and the bites of a new world tarantula, um, this is also person dependent. So just like with things like bee stings for one person might be a little painful, might be a little bit of irritation for somebody who's allergic to bee stings could be life threatening. Um, generally, the best thing to do is to never get bit by a tarantula so you don't have to find out whether you're allergic to them or not. So what I say here is kind of generalized. It may not apply to you. You may also be somebody who doesn't have much of a reaction. Um, what I have found is that most people have some sort of reaction and usually for new world tarantulas that looks like pain for a few hours, you know, some irritation, localized swelling and redness. Um, the actual mechanical bites of a new world tarantula can make you bleed. Depending on the size or age of the tarantula, this could also be pretty painful. But in terms of the venom, you can expect some swelling, some pain, and to be uncomfortable for a few hours. With any of these bites, if you actually experience things like shortness of breath, feeling tightness in your chest, um, or things like numbness or a reaction that is just like so painful, do not play around, go to the hospital or get medical attention. So, um, and that could even happen with a new world trench, like perhaps you are allergic or perhaps you are very sensitive to the venom. So, that's new world tarantulas. One thing that people tend to do when they are around new world tarantulas, if they know that they're quite sensitive to the hairs or, you know, or, or don't want to get bitten, what they'll do is they're, they will wear gloves. So that would one, protect them from possibly a bite if you're doing something in the enclosure. And also some people will say that even when their tarantula is not kicking hairs, if they're handling this tarantula or around this tarantula with their bare hands, they're so sensitive to those hairs that they will get a reaction anyway. So some people do wear gloves around their tarantulas all the time. So it really is about, you know, what works for you in terms of caring for your tarantula. Um, but generally you definitely don't want to be stressing out your tarantula so that they feel like they have to bite or kick off their hairs. The next group is the old world tarantulas, which is, I guess, kind of characterized as like the baboon tarantulas. And the reason that this set of tarantulas has more potent venom is because they actually don't have those urticating hairs. So the, this part of tarantula specifications, because they only have their bite, mother nature gave them more power there. 
So what that means is that mechanically and physically, these tarantulas may have larger fangs, possibly because of their size. Some of these tarantulas tend to get a little bit bigger than New World tarantulas. Um, it could also be their speed. A lot of these tarantulas are considered more defensive or like they're super lightning fast. So they may be more likely to use, and, and they'll also be a lot faster and more likely to bite. Uh, I think the New World tarantulas in comparison will tend to kick hairs first as a warning and then they'll resort to biting. Um, but for the Old World tarantulas, because this is their only defense, they are very likely to use it. And so for these guys, what you can expect is a lot more pain. So it might even, some people describe this as excruciating pain. And where the neural tarantula venom or bite might be more localized, this can actually cause pain that travels up the limb. So not pleasant at all, much worse than a new world tarantula. You can also feel nauseous. So that's like the venom taking its, its toll on your body. You can also feel lightheaded and you might even get some muscle cramping. You know, some people will say that like um, moving their hands or wherever they got bitten is difficult. And instead of hours of this, it might actually last days. So that sounds incredibly unpleasant. And that's why most beginner tarantula owners are encouraged to start with a new world tarantula because one, they tend to be slower and their venom isn't as potent. So it's a pretty nice uh, learning experience in terms of how dangerous that might be to you. There are a lot of really great YouTube videos. If you are curious about getting the experience of multiple people, you can definitely go to tarantula Facebook groups. There's usually people who are posting in there about their experiences. Um, Tarantula forums are great. There's many online now. Um, and there's also a lot of great YouTube videos about tarantula owners posting their experiences. So you'll get a wide range of different reactions. Like I said, everybody's different. But when you think about old world tarantulas and you're researching those, that's where you'll start to, to hear people really struggling behind the camera or when somebody's filming them. Um, and you know, why would somebody film this stuff? I do believe there's a subset of tarantula owners who will film it or record it just for like bragging rights to show how tough they are, which, you know, I guess in any hobby, there's that kind of subset of people. Um, but most of us are actually recording stuff, whether it's observation, bite reports, all sorts of things, because there isn't a lot of research on tarantulas. And so a lot of it is owner led in terms of recording how tarantulas impact humans. And so, um, I feel like tarantula owners are kind of creating a, with the help of the internet, a wealth of information for new tarantula owners or anybody who has the curiosity about tarantulas and wants to learn. And so we're sharing our experiences. So I've certainly appreciated when people do bite reports um, online. Definitely YouTube videos have really helped give me a sense of, you know, I should probably stay in my lane with a new world tarantula because I don't think <laughs> that I would ever be ready or have the desire to get a more venomous tarantula. So um, that's important because I think if you don't know that and if you don't know the reality of what these creatures are capable of, like, yes, they are beautiful. They are also wild. You might start off with a tarantula that is like way too advanced for you, way too fast way too um, defensive. Yeah, looking at this stuff is important. So yes, yeah, so then it's new world, old world, and then this is an old world tarantula, but it's kind of in its own subset. subset. It's kind of in its own category in terms of what Exotic Pet Society posted in this gradient of venom potency. So the last and third category is the pokey species and these are old world tarantulas however their venom tends to be the worst so with this you can expect to have all the great stuff that comes with an old world tarantula bite but more and worse so you might with this tarantula bite have breathing issues chest pains that sounds absolutely terrifying um, instead of getting muscle cramps in just one area of your body, you will actually have full body cramps. You might also have heart palpitations. And instead of pain lasting for a few hours or days, you could have recurring issues for months. So that sounds absolutely awful. 
And I think I, now that I'm kind of thinking about just how awful that would be, I think I might make a future video about the treatment of what it might look like if you were to maybe go to the ER or to try to, you know, treat it yourself, if that's even possible. Um, you know, what might you might do, what you might do to take care of yourself during that, because it has happened to people and they've survived to tell, but that sounds absolutely brutal in terms of uh, having to live through that. So yeah, this species is really um, a very gorgeous species, which is why I think it attracts a lot of beginners, but at the same time, very, very risky, especially if you're new to tarantula keeping and don't really know your way around their behavior. So yes, so that is kind of the, scope of how it might look like in terms of venom potency. If you feel like I've left anything out, please uh, feel free to let me know in the comments. And I will kind of end with this. We're talking about venom potency and tarantula bites, but I do, as I say all of this, I do want to emphasize that tarantulas don't want to bite you. They don't want to kick hairs at you either. They are animals and their main purpose is to survive. And they do that by instinct. So they don't know that you're just opening the enclosure to give them water or food or that you mean no harm. They're wild creatures and they're always going to react in self-defense no matter what your intention is. And so they would never proactively attack you just because are bitten or kicked hairs at, that means that this tarantula felt threatened or that it was going to be hurt and needed to defend itself. So as I say all this, I do definitely want to remind you all, um, especially the newbies, that tarantulas are defensive. I think that's a huge distinction to make and for us to remember. So anyway guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed. I hope that was useful and um, I will see you next week for Tarantula Tuesday. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.